Hey guys, this is the first in uh, my series of uh, Tips and Tricks by Eska. We're going to try and look at uh, several kits, different vehicles, loadouts, layouts, how I outrig my kits, how I outrig my vehicles, and I'm going to show you what's good, what's not so good, and what you should probably start looking at if you haven't thought about it before. Alright, so this is my current build for my tanks. I have a Sable round, I have the Guaxio Heavy Machine Gun, uh, the only countermeasure I use is the active protection use thermal optics and right now I'm using thermal armor thermal camo basically um, I'll talk a little bit more about this later on in the video okay so the first round we're talking about is a Sabo round That's my favorite round it is a fast firing flat trajectory round um, one thing that I really like about this round is that if you want to hit jets hit helicopters this round is going to be almost uh, right where your target right so whenever you fire it, you'll see that it pretty much maintains it. Very little bullet drop. Um, it also has a lot of armor penetration. So whenever you hit like a light armor vehicle, trying to hit a cockpit of a helicopter like you'll see in a minute, you'll see that the shell actually penetrates the armor and kills the pilot. The next thing I want to note out here is that look when I hit him. You see where it says the vehicle damage is 80? That is the highest amount of damage of all the rounds. Alright, so you see here, shot fired almost right on the helicopter, and we direct hit him. Go ahead and slow it down just a little bit. You'll see that I, very, I use very little leading, very little guiding on this. So if you're using other shells and you're constantly missing, you're either going behind them or you're going in front of them, try switching to the Sable round. I, I can guarantee you, once you play with it a little bit more, you're going to realize this is a really powerful, uh, very accurate shell. You're going to love using this this time. Alright, this round we're going to talk about is the HE round. Now this is a very specialized, very niche round. It's a high explosive round. A lot of people like to use this against armor, but it really that's not where it's made for. It's actually made for um, infantry. Um, the idea behind this round is you're using a lot of explosion damage. You're going to be taking out light armored vehicles. You're going to be taking out a lot of infantry in one area. And it also has the slowest trajectory and it has the most bullet drop. A lot of people use this and they always wonder why do I miss my shots? Well I'm telling you, you you've got to use a round that's actually designed for tanks. Um, if you look here, I'm shooting at these trees and I'm missing terribly because of the bullet drop. Um, coming up here, I'm engaging a helicopter. He's doing a couple strafing runs on me and I'm going to try and get some um, good beads on him. As I roll forward, roll back, try and kind of fake him a bit. See, I shoot but I barely miss so we'll go ahead and slow that down you'll see like I'm right on him but I just miss because it has that bullet drop that goes right underneath the helicopter so I get another shot here and boom I have to take into account that there's a lot of bullet drop and when I do that I can make that heavy hit right on the cockpit but one of the things you'll notice is that the vehicle damage is only 75 and the pilot is still alive so this threat is still a threat to me that's why I like to the sable rounds more than these Alright, the next round we're talking about is the normal round, or the AP round. The first round you start off with the tank, um, and it's a very good general use round. Uh, it's got a lot of explosive, it's got a lot of uh, flat trajectory, but it's not as flat and it's not as fast as the Sable round. Um, this is just, you know, your general all-well-purpose round. I mean, if you're, if you're going to be using it to just kind of play in the tank, you, just, you know you're not going to last very long in the tank, this is kind of a good round to do. You can kind of... Uh, generalize yourself a bit. Coming up here you will see that I do a hit on this helicopter. This is a glitch in the game actually. Whenever you hit a shell, tank shell to a helicopter, sometimes it doesn't do damage. As you can see there, I clearly make the hit, but it just doesn't register. I mean, that's the game. It's full of glitches. Um, next I'll be coming to another shot. He's actually flying a little bit low. I hit him. Vehicle damage is 80, but because it has no armor penetration, uh, that has that's a big key. No armor penetration. Pilot is still alive, so he can still survive this fight. He is still a threat. That's why when you use the sable round, you hit a light armor vehicle. It's gonna go through there. It's gonna make contact with your enemy infantry inside that vehicle. And it's gonna eliminate. Them. That's what we're trying to do. Thermal camo. This has recently been buffed in the patch. Absolutely love thermal camo. If you watch these videos here, what you'll see is the one on the left has normal camo, the one on the right has thermal camo. As you can tell, as I get further away, 
it's harder to find out which one is actually a tank. And whenever I come in close, the one that doesn't have thermal camo is bright. But the longer I look at the thermal camo tank, the more he glows for me. It's, it kind of works like that. Whenever he just comes into the frame of view, he's not really easy to see. As you can tell here, I blew up the wall. Boom, I can finally see him, but he's still really, really great. So if I'm playing in a map like um, an oil field or whatnot where it's kind of dark, it's really great to have this. Here in this video, you'll see this tank does not have thermal camo. Very, very easy to see. This is why thermal camo has been so much buffed, is that it's one of those things that's not really noticeable. That's what you want. You want to hide behind the tank, you want to be barely noticeable. I have a love-hate relationship with this show. This show is very tank destroyer-ish. You want to make a good tank destroyer build, have this, have a sable round. The main problem I find with the staff shell over using an HMG oh, is shit, it makes you back. really only a tank destroyer. You really can't do very well, much with the tree very back. easily. The other problem I have with this is whenever you fire it, it's going to go towards the target, and if you get close to the target, it's going to automatically go up and hit it at the top part, which is mostly the weak spot of the tank. But the problem is it will only do 25 damage no matter where you hit that vehicle. So it's kind of a niche uh, market for, like, tank weapons. It's really only going to do very little for you. It's only going to be against uh, armor. And whenever I'm building kits, I want to be versatile. I want to be able to hit armor. I want to be able to survive against infantry. I can't do that with this shell. Waxio well, Heavy Machine Gun. Plain and simple. There's really not much I need to talk about here. It's going to allow you to use your main shell and then quickly sh uh, switch to this to kill infantry. But the reason why I choose the HMG over the LMG is that this does damage to vehicles. So if you have that little C4 jeep running up on you you're going to be able to use this to help kill it quickly and you'll be able to get through that small light armor on most vehicles and kill people behind it all right so i'm going to talk a minute about the reactive armor reactive armor is terrible for tanks a reactive armor what its main purpose is for is to stop critical damage on a vehicle now tanks cannot take critical hits they can only take mobilizing hits now, aa APC, they can take critical hits. That's why using it for them, that makes sense. You do reactive armor for anti-air and for APCs, that makes sense. But if you look here, I'm taking damage from this tank every time he hits me. And what people think it does is they think that the reactive armor takes the damage away for one hit. That's not how it works. If you look here, you'll see that I'm showing you as this M1 Abrams is coming in. You'll see that it's bulkier, it's bigger. That's what it looks like. You see all these little extra panels on the side of it? That's what that's what reactive armor looks like on an enemy vehicle. It's going to make it look bulkier. It's going to make the armor look like it has more armor plating on the sides. Um, but it's not really going to do much on a tank versus your shells because the tank already, as we mentioned, is not a hit. So it's just kind of useless. Alright, so the next item we're talking about is thermal optics. I love thermal optics for just the fact that you can quickly eliminate everything that's useless in the scene. In the trees, the ground, most of that is useless to you. But whenever you look through thermal optics, anything that's hot, like you see my, my friendly tank here, I keep switching back and forth and I can see that he's hot. So that's my target. That's how I'm able to quickly find like that little uh, whatever, that infantry unit far away because they're white hot on my screen. You see this is an enemy tank and he doesn't have thermal camo, so it's easy to find him. One of the problems with this is with the new camo, you have to constantly switch between off and on so you can kind of see people sneaking up on you. Here's an example. That's my friendly. He's on that heel. He has thermal camo, and I can't see him very well in thermal. Adaptive camo. This is the best camo to use, hands down. Uh, when you select one of the adaptive camos, it's going to be that pattern and whatever field you're in. If you're playing on a snow map you choose the turtle adaptive it's going to be snow turtle adaptive if you're in if you still have the turtle adaptive and you go to a desert it's going to be desert turtle adaptive it's going to change based on the map you go to if you don't have to go in there 
every time and choose desert or choose snow depending on what, what map you're on. That's why I love this camo and that's why people don't understand anything about it. Active protection is the only countermeasure I recommend. Um, it's used in many, many situations. It's kind of like a shield for a lot of uh, different take components, but you can't really think of it as a shield because when you start thinking of it like that, um, you start getting upset whenever the things that it doesn't protect you against start hitting. Looking here, you'll see what happens. Uh, this enemy tank goes ahead and throws the green up. I hit him, and oh, his active protection was, in it, was enabled, and it did do damage. Slowing it down, you'll see the green light on the actual tank. It'll come up. When it comes up, don't fire at these guys. You'll see the green. I fire, and then boom, completely deflects it. Well, dang. I just missed my main shot on this guy, so now he didn't take any damage. Let's try it again. Uh, fire, hit. He didn't have the green light on, so that means that whenever I hit him this time, his active protection was off. He took the full damage, full brunt of that. That's what you're looking for. You're going to want to wait for those tanks to have their green off. Here you see I'm using it. The inside of my tank visor is green. I deflected the shot and I'm able to maneuver around to get to his weak spot. He's thinking that, you know, I got a good one on him. Oh wait, active protection was enabled. Boom. Now you can use this defensively. You can use it offensively. Offensively, this is how you use it. As you're storming the tank, Take the first shot that he takes from you and use your momentum to get behind it. Let's try it again. My active protection just fell off and then he was able to do direct damage to me and that's kind of how it happens. Hey guys, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be adding a lot more. Let me know your comments below. Thanks.